She is a gorgeous. When she drops her age, you will be socked because, my God, she does not look her age. I don't know if that's a compliment, but definitely she should tell us where she is scooping that from what fountain she's drinking from. She is a disc jockey. Entrepreneur, she's an actress, but above all, she is a mother. Let's welcome Piero McKenna in the Yay, building. Welcome back. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> How's you been? I am first so excited to be here. Like, yeah. Honestly, when I was, I was told to come, uh -huh. I was just like, yes. Like, when <laughs> that was like I, I think like three four days ago wow, I was like, nice. ah, yes I am coming like don't oh. even ask twice uh -huh. Uh -huh. I've nice. been looking forward to being here yeah, yeah. So I know so I'm excited you. to have you here because there's a lot of things going on you know yep. there's a lot <laughs> of things going on and today you're going to be addressing the nation absolutely yeah. today you're addressing I'm the nation this. <laughs> I'm telling you but just to start off maybe yeah. for the guys who are seeing you know mm -hmm. okay we want to get to know her yeah. um kindly do introduce yourself to your new audience starting today all right this is the part where I change into DJ <laughs> <laughs> my name is DJ Piera McKenna you know you know my name is DJ Piera McKenna yes mm -hmm. uh, I've been an actress for a while a DJ mm -hmm. for over 10 years as well I celebrated my 10th anniversary as a DJ wow. uh, last year. I haven't done the celebration yet because of uh, COVID, mm -hmm. but we're planning to do that. So I'm quite a legend yeah. and old. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. I, I, I am an actress. I've, uh -huh. I've featured in a couple of uh, films, Disconnect, you know, all this, whatever. You can check them out on Netflix. Uh, of course. Just hey! yeah. yeah. Miss Kayo. Yeah. Yeah. Netflix. Yeah, right. you know, you know. I, uh -huh. for, maybe for those who can take it back from way back of Tausi, Taidi Hai, Kisuli Suli, those ones, yes. I started way back a bit, yeah. yeah. So that's basically me in a nutshell, and I'm a mom, mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a mentor to many young people out there, and I do other things that maybe people don't like. Yeah, like, yeah. but then you, you didn't start off as a DJ. No. Like the DJ as a passion came much later, and yeah. you actually self-taught and, and didn't yeah. go to school for it. Yeah. You were a reporter, yes. you were a producer. Mm -hmm. Talk to us. You did a master's degree in, 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 mass, in, communication. in, in mass communication. Yes. You are a media personality at yes. some point, of course, at Kuni. I don't know where yeah. I'm at, Garibuka. I know. Yeah, I know. so do you, what is, what is your first passion? So to be honest, uh, I wanted to be a pediatrician, and I've said that all the time. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. for me to study, I was just gonna do meds, become a pediatrician, and just care for kids. Like that was everything mm -hmm. to go for kids. Yeah. But when I s came to Nairobi and I got a show that uh, those times of Kisulisuli in KBC, yes. I was like, okay. So every time I interacted with these people, these superstar, you know, your old folks, Kina John Karani, yes. you know, such, and I, I used to admire them so much, and I was like, maybe this is why I belong. Mm -hmm. And then I started having that passion of acting, and in school I did. I mean, if you say Pierre, yeah. I those times everyone would be like, that chick used to win all the awards and whatever. So I was yeah. like, maybe this is where my passion and my talent is. And yeah. I started trying to pursue it, and then acting became it. You know, I started acting with Mnet, with Changes. I, I don't know if you've watched Changes on Mnet. Yes. It was such a big show. Yes, yeah? it was. And then I was like, I, I kind of love this. And then now when I went back to radio, and I was like, I need to be different. Yeah. I don't want to be the same presenters mm -hmm. who are there all the time. So I was like, let me try DJing on radio. And when yeah. I tried it out, people are like, Allah, she can do it. And then yeah. guys that calling me for gigs are, that was, that was it. Yeah. I just loved it. So mm -hmm. I, I can't even choose between acting and DJing, which I really love. I yeah. think it just much. Mm -hmm. so okay, like, let me ask you this. What has been uh, one of your biggest struggle, you know, being in the industry for yeah. all that while? What is that one thing in your feel? Hey, this was, you know. A real struggle. Exactly. I think for me is the fact that as a woman, people don't think you can really do it mm -hmm. without the help of a man mm -hmm. or without getting your way easy. You know yeah. what I mean? Sexism. Like, yeah, yeah, right? So it's, I've been through so many of those where people feel like they need to do you a favor. Yeah. And I'm like, no, you don't need to, to do me a favor. I'm, I'm, I'm quite okay. Yeah. You know, and those are struggles. Yeah. You will find people will call you and they'll ask for favors and you have to lose such jobs because I don't compromise. And I've said that over and over again for the many years I've been in entertainment mm -hmm. world, I've never compromised myself and I'm never about to do it. Yeah. So anything you see I've done, it is my own effort. Yeah. So anytime I get into a place where I'm getting compromised, I have to leave it. Mm -hmm. So it's a struggle. I have lost money. Mm -hmm. I've lost deals. You know, you go on the table and sign pretty good deals. Yes. And there are, you know, there are conditions mm -hmm. and you have to go like, this is not me, I'm yeah. sorry. And you go home and you've, you know you're, you're in tears because you know it's a good job that you've lost. But at the end of the day, when you sit back in your own house and you see your things, you see your kid doing well, going to good schools, and you're like, 
okay, this is just me. It's worth At it. least mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't you compromise, didn't compromise yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's a big mm. challenge for me in the industry where people really don't believe that females can actually just do it without mm. a backup of a man. And I do yeah. love the fact that you've touched on that because mm. you know we've had a lot of stories. You know, yeah, um, female. Now you being a DJ, yeah, you know, we having artists who have compromised, yeah, and they're like, you know, this happened to me, blah blah blah, and all of that. Mm -hmm. What's your take on that whole scenario? The whole thing that has been happening in the music industry. Yeah. First, I can say, mm -hmm. I, and I'll, I'll never blame anybody mm -hmm. for whichever direction they choose to take in life. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where their star is. Yeah. But all I can say is never put yourself in a place where you, you are compromised. Mm -hmm. For example, there are people who believe if I get into a boardroom where the MD is, I'll come out of there with a job because I'm good looking and I'm whatever. Already mm -hmm. that mentality is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for the youngsters, especially this new generation, I've sat with many people, I mentor many of them. Yeah. And you, when you listen to their kind of reasoning, is it's make it easy. Let me get many followers on social media and post my pictures and one of these rich men is going to hit me yeah. up and get me a V8 and the next thing I'll be living in Runda, I'll be flying to Dubai. That is the Instant easy kind of Instant gratification. That is it. Yes. And I think from where our guys come from, and I think it's good to mention my age, I'm 40. <laughs> so that means we've been there for Whoa, a while there. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a, we, we've learned how to toil for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't come easy. Mm -hmm. If I want a V8, I'm not going to sit and think, oh, that guy is going to buy it for me. I'm yeah. just thinking of how do I save this? How do I get this money? Why do I do this? Yeah. But we are putting ourselves in a place where we are compromised. Yes. And then now when the man or whoever you've put yourself in that place compromises you, mm -hmm. you complain. That's true. I am not saying anybody has put... I'm not blaming anybody. Anyone, and yeah. you hope mm -hmm. you get me right. Yeah, yeah? yeah no, it's yes. true. It's where yeah. you put yourself. I will never go on a date with somebody if I know I don't plan to take that, that, that relationship anywhere. Mm -hmm. Because then I am putting that man in a position yeah. where he's... Yes, yeah. And sometimes you're looking at it at just like lunch, you know, like right. you've been invited for lunch, you already know what right. this man wants, right. but then you're pretending exactly. to not exactly know what they want. That's and it's just for lunch. No, it's yeah. not lunch and we all know it. Exactly. We all know it's not lunch. So if you know you've been called for that lunch and you're not going to do it, do it. Just don't go. Yeah. 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 Don't put yourself in a place where you get co compromised mm -hmm. and where you know you're not going to give anything. So just stay away from it. Go yeah. another direction. Let's yeah. talk right. about it. I love it. I love it. Really I love it. it. Okay. It's important that you talk about it yeah. as well, you know, because it's becoming too, too, it's too, too, too often too stories. soon. Yeah. Yeah. Too many stories we are hearing. Yeah. Right. Amazing. Yeah. And, and, and speaking about losing, there's a time when you, after you held, you had your child, mm. you gained weight and you had to start loving this new body that yeah. you had never been in. Yeah. And there was a lot of body shaming stories yeah. Yeah. from your side. And yeah. definitely not just you, but mm. of course you're going to speak for other people yeah. that have been body shamed before. Mm. How is that experience like and what is that one word you should you would tell someone that truly be hides hides behind the keyboard and yeah. busy just writing all these nasty things first i always say those guys who do that are cowards yeah they are real cowards mm -hmm. for me having given birth i used to be a small size like yeah. i used to be 50 kgs mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden i shot to 94 kgs what people don't know and i think since we, we talk, we're friends, yeah. you yeah. know I went through hell. Yeah. Like I really went through hell. First, I'm trying to figure out how to be a, a, a mom. mom. Mm -hmm. And I don't like saying a single mom, but to be a single mom where yeah. I'm entirely taking care of the child. Mm -hmm. I have to know where the, the bills, how the bills will be paid, the jobs, the uh, formula. The diapers and yeah. all that. There is so much going on and you cannot work. Mm -hmm. Especially me being a DJ, I couldn't go to work. I can't go. I've just given birth. There is no way I can hit the club, you know? Yeah, and the so rent doesn't know. No, <laughs> my friends, no. Don't even talk yeah. about that. So there was a lot. Mm -hmm. I was going through a lot of uh, pressure and trauma. Yeah. And then now people come. And, you know, I mean, just sitting home and breastfeeding and you have to eat, you definitely have to gain weight. Yeah. So one minute I was 50, the next minute I was 94. And I'm just like... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I even myself, I could feel it, to be honest. I could feel I'm heavy. I could not do most of the things I used to do. I couldn't work out. I have a baby who's crying every night. Mm -hmm. My baby had colic, you know? So oh you're not God, crying. Yeah. Right? So there was so much. And then now you wake up in the morning and you find a newspaper. An entire column has written about you. A whole page, even. A whole pa the you know how you've gained weight. <laughs> you and know? Whatever. And have and those like, mirrored pictures. Yo, dude, I'm like, okay. And then it hit me. Yeah. Don't give them the satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And I looked at myself, I'm like, oh, come on. Uh, do you send some words over here? Mm -hmm. Do you send some words? <laughs> How we are okay. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, you know, I have good uh -huh. boobs. My, like, my boobs look very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're breastfeeding. Finally. Yeah, I'm like, yo, dude, I've got nice hips, yeah. you know? 
it's not like I was looking really bad, but I was like, why don't I love myself? Why am I listening to those people who think beautiful is this? Yeah. Why don't I why why don't I sit and think this is what is beautiful? Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I sat I sat on TV and addressed it and I was like, you people who think I am not beautiful, most probably your women, other women, which is very true. Yeah. yeah. I, it's true. I, I, I I your men could be really hollering at me and you don't Oh like, my you know? god. Yes. So I was like, let's stay calm. Yeah. Yeah. It that's was true. hard, but if I stand right now, yeah. I went back to what I used to. Exactly. So what were you saying? Exactly. And and what is that standard of beauty that you guys Thank have you. placed out there? Of course, we have Pierre McKenna still in the building. Do you have any questions? Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. We're gonna take a very short commercial break. When we come back, as I always say, fire on ice. Yes, welcome back. And of course, I'm seeing you guys on our SMS line. Triple one, triple four, triple one is uh, the number at only one shilling to Patima Oniako. And I'm seeing, uh, I like that, that energy, Piera and Grace, where you are. Uh, I like and I really just want to say congratulations to her. And I'm sorry for her, for all that she's been through. She deserves a better. Uh, hi, Piera. Warm greetings from Fiona. Um, Nana Salimia Piera and Ampenda Sana. Uh, we say, hey, Sandra over here. I'm enjoying the show keep it up guys lots of love and i'm seeing i am lynette from um nanyuki i am really loving the show hey ladies you're looking good um me niko sawa na joyce um six to seven hours in china nalala hadi naota na mirikanjo <laughs> wow you have some guys hi my routine is 8 p.m to 5 a.m stress no stress i just sleep and uh when we answer my idols hey lovely ladies um today you look amazing your story akibaki if i was the late mama lucy shoes pia ningesema i end the live to clear the air out <laughs> okay now um i'm gonna say my hello girls you look fantastic ni elder kutoka gido 44 now we're gonna say ni fei love the show from county 001 cute ladies and we're cute girls naka dope squish na kupenda bure ni miri kutoka makwe ni sija shrub anaitua miri <laughs> M-I-R-R-Y. But, yeah. you know, talking of your feedback, thank you guys for sh um, for sharing. Um, let's take a look at what DJ Piera McKenna does when she's on the decks. Hey. <laughs> but let's talk about you and, and, and what you started. Yeah. Pack and chill. Because that's, that's the setup. Yeah. How was it like moving into a space wh where no one had ever been? Like it's yeah. a trail you're make, making for yourself. Yeah. No one had ever like tr never tried such a thing. But you're there saying, okay, I have this idea and mm -hmm. I have to visualize it and still do it on the ground. How was it that? What was it like? First, I wasn't serious about it. Really? Imagine. I, I, I was just like, first, you know, you remember I was caught up in, in the States when yes. COVID started. Yes. So I got locked up there for like two weeks. When I was in the hotel room, I was just like, damn, I'm coming back home. There'll be no gigs. There'll be nothing. You know, like, I'm just like, where will I get my money from? So I kept thinking of ideas, like, what can I do? So when I came back here, I quarantined for like 14 days. Yeah. Still, I was in the house trying to grow the idea. And that's when the name Pack and Chill came. And I was like, okay, it doesn't sound bad. So initially when I was starting it, I was doing it for my friends. I was like, let me go gather my friends, mm -hmm. come with yeah. your cars, you know, chill there. I put my decks and whatever I play. Then wow. we just hang out with, you know, social distanced. We just chill. Yeah. So the first time I did, I went to Kilela Show Primary. I was like, can I be doing it here? And they're like, um, they're like, how many people do you expect? And I was like, not more than 50 people, yeah. if ever it works. So it's just me and my friends. So they come and pack their cars. The first time I did it, I just sent like a few messages to my friends. We had like 50 cars. Wow. So I play and I was like, this vibe is actually something, you know? Yeah. And then the second time, those friends told their other friends. So we had like 150 cars and I'm like, no, this is crazy. So now I start growing the idea. I'm like, okay, now we need to do this. We need to do this. Sponsors would come yeah. and they're like, okay, can we work with you? This looks like an interesting idea. I'm like, okay. So you're not writing it. proposals no, now. They're coming to you. They were, they, everybody was like, okay, this is a nice vibe. And yeah. then you remember the, ma the crowd is quite mature. So majority of them mm. are either... Maybe MD somewhere, and they're like, okay, this is this is something we can uh -huh. invest in as a company. So that's how I, people like Inamonenchi Credit came on board. Uh, people like Spot Pesa, and I remember one time when um, we were kicked out of Kinilesha because it had become big, and I had to add more speakers. The bigger space. And then now it's it's home. They, I mean, it's it's their homes there, yeah. so they're like, no, we we can't. It's a little bit too much. Yeah. And then Carnival called me, and they're like, can we give you the grounds? Uh -huh. I was like, God, you know, like like it's like God was wow. pushing me from 
the way they say from one glory to another to yes. another like that and every time i wanted to give up god would show me the reason a reason not to so i pushed myself and then the next i remember before we got there there was that long lockdown that happened for like two months yeah. there was no nothing like nothing was happening even as guys were told to chill mm -hmm. As much as we're obeying all those COVID protocols and stuff, yeah. we were told now you need to chill. I remember slightly before that, we filled the carnival field mm -hmm. completely. We had to lock the gates. Like no one else can come in. So like it had really, really worked. But now we had to invest in sound and, you know, speakers and all that. So it became quite expensive as well. Mm -hmm. Was it scary? It was. There's a time I stood up there on the decks and I was like looking around and I'm like, oh my God. How what do I do with these people? Yeah. You know, like, am I even sure I can sustain this? Do I want to, su to sustain it? I'm, a, I'm not an event organizer. No, mm -hmm. I have never been. This was a new mm -hmm. thing for me. So I was really, like, scared. I, I felt like I need to stop. I'm going to give it to uh, an events company to run it. Yeah. But I was like, to be honest, my initial plan was just to give people a vibe. So let me give people the vibe. If mm -hmm. it works, yes. If it doesn't work, let it just, just nowadays people have gotten it. People just come, even if maybe I haven't said it will be there, you see cars coming in, they're like, <laughs> is it happening? Can, can you? Like, no, not today. Did you, you do know. one in Kitengela? No, now. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, so simple. Yeah. <laughs> no. So what, what has happened is that people like the idea. Oh, so it's like a so franchise. They, no, it's not a franchise. It's supposed to be a franchise. Yes. But Kenyans, as we know them, they will take up an idea and oh, copy God. it and just do it. Mm -hmm. So they call it uh, maybe something like Park and Grill. Yeah. So people think it's pack and chill, so they just go there oh. and doing it. Others call it pack and tune. Others call it pack and chew. So, you know, when you just hear yeah. that, you're not there to sit and ask, is Piera going to be there or whatever? It's just not me. Like, it's a vibe. So, but I'm, I'm happy. If it's feeding They're many coping. people. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if, it's, if the idea is feeding yeah. many people, I'm, I'm like, you know what? It's fine. But what really pissed me off is just that the other day, somebody now decides to call it pack and chill. Oh. You know, you take the name, you take the, exactly the way I charge and the the everything oh, i do sad. and then you take it somewhere else so people of course are like okay park and chill is in is in nakuru this time because i've started going out of town yeah so guys were calling and they're like so we are going to nakuru so we're going to nakuru i'm like uh, no uh, yeah. you know i'm like no we are not and then i call the guys from that place i'm like guys what are you doing we're in entertainment we're not supposed to be like this if you want a franchise that's fine yeah. you can come and tell me the like, same thing we did with eldoret eldoret runs park and chill but we work together yeah so you can't come in and they were very rude Oh my very, God. very rude. And they're like, mm. you know, we don't care. This is business or whatever. I was like, okay, you know what? Right now I don't have energy for that. I will let it cool and I'll see what to do later. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's quite a scary business. Wow. Yeah. yeah, people think I have money and I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. You're being modest now. No, I actually don't. You know why? <laughs> I, I need to <laughs> clarify that. Yeah. I need to make it very clear. We have sound, we have security, we have a lot of things that we have to pay. Yeah. The overheads. So it's not easy to make money. Sometimes I fund that thing myself because mm -hmm. if you don't have a sponsor, then that means you have to pay. Like sound only is about 350 It's 000. very expensive It's right expensive now. for yeah. anybody who's done events, you know. So mm -hmm. really when people think you're making money, I don't think you are. It's just mm -hmm. people are getting a good vibe. We are all <laughs> trying to forget COVID and that's about it. But thanks that's, that's for giving us the vibes, man. Yes, yeah, but you know, we've, unfortunately, we've just apparently come to the end of the show. No! And, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I know, right? We had so many things to ask and, you know, a lot of things to talk about. But I'm looking forward to you coming back to the show I'll as well. So just a parting shot to your fans and the, the guys who have been supporting you and yeah. everyone that loves you and is, you know, Team Piera. And Rika. Um, just, you know, and your oh, social and media as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All I can say is, guys, thank you so much mm. for all your support. It's made me who I am today. Remember, uh, Park and Chili is coming to its first anniversary on the 30th of October. We are doing our first anniversary. One year of handling this COVID. We are doing well. So please come through. And for anything else you guys like to hear from me, always DM me. Yeah. Me, I always reply to DMs and comments. Uh, my social media is Piera McKenna Official. That's like IG Piera M on Twitter and DJ Piera Kenya on Facebook. Please talk to me. My baby loves you. I see the much love you, you give her. She loves you too, guys. <laughs> yeah. All I can say to the young people, yeah. please believe in yourself. Be you. Believe in what you have. Don't believe it's your success is pegged on somebody else, yeah. okay? If she's successful, she's successful. If she's successful, it's her, it's her, it's me. Absolutely. Believe in yourself. Be thank you. Okay? you. I love thank you, guys. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Piera. And thank you guys for tuning in. But we are soon to last day. Cindy, so Sky Girls episode, uh, season two, episode two is coming up next. And, and from it's love from all the girls. And goodbye.